Um, and past speakers, so we've been working on Ethmon, um, which is an on-chain Game Boy. Um, the details of it uh, are, it is an Asterix on-chain optimistic Game Boy. Um, so before we get started with describing more details, we actually have a demo on Gurdy Testnet. If you just head to ethereumga.me, um, it's a pretty not great looking <laughs> Ethernet <Ethos> page, <laughs> but it works, so. <laughs> Yeah, you can you can make transactions like you can move or you can press buttons and it will happen on our simulator. Uh, I'll hear from the one? Ethereum G A dot M. and hopefully this guy his name is Chris by the way, but he should move right. Yeah. <laughs> or at least face right. <laughs> well yeah, it takes a while. Um, but yeah, we'll keep the simulator up um, on our uh, side chain side screen here. But, um, oh yeah, it, it did come. Yeah. I see like someone tried approaching him, but yeah. <laughs> All right, um, I guess first we should just talk about what this is even doing. So the big part of that is what are even optimistic proofs? So optimistic proofs are mostly popular in the context of layer two rollups and um, optimism in particular. Um, and the way there it works is um, you have some parameters. It seems like people are moving the character, right? But um, <laughs> the way in case of optimism or other um, rollups it works is um, you have a L2 which has some amount of uh, some trades or some data going through that is supposed to be executed uh, by a sequencer. Um, and the sequencer executes this, creates straight routes and all these kinds of things. But on the L1, they only post their data of the transaction. So for instance, for Uniswap trade, it would be like the inputs um, of the trade um, and things of that sort. Um, so this would be a very low cost way to do transactions. Uh, but then the question is, uh, this assumes a lot of trust on the sequencer. So what if the sequencer was evil uh, and they tried to uh, change the NFT cell you were trying to make? Uh, so the claim is that given just the data on chain, uh, if validators or any third parties are looking at this data on chain um, and trying to simulate the transactions themselves, um, they have crypto economic incentives to play this fraud proof game, uh, which in which case um, the sequencer will get slashed or uh, some of it in other ways on L1. So here is the part which is interesting, is Canon. Canon is Optimism's fraud and <coughs> system, um, which essentially just takes in like some input data, which would, in case of Optimism, be transactions, um, and some program that's compiled to MIPS instruction set, which is just like another assembly instruction set, um, which in case of Optimism is like an EDM, um, and essentially just spits out who was right, was the sequencer correct, or was the defender, or like the challenger of the transaction correct, and whatever supplement is dealt with on chain on that. Yeah, and the biggest part of this is that all of this is happening objectively, there's no human in the loop, and it's all happening on chain. So you can make, uh, you can have the same sort of guarantees that L1 is making about your claims. So now, how do we put the Game Boy actually on chain? Optimism runs transaction on the EVM. Similarly, each one runs game moves on the Game Boy. Uh, game moves are transactions submitted by the user and they can be like button presses. So more abstractly, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're given a game which is in form of the Game Boy emulator and the Pokemon cartridge, and we're given inputs. We want to say that, we want to prove that putting, like put piping these inputs into the emulator will produce a valid game state and this game state contains things like the RAM, it contains like the display, the audio, the registers, and we want to prove that these the state is correct on chain or and with the same guarantees as L1. So that's kind of what we did. We compiled the program, we compiled our Game Boy emulator to MIPS, and then we did Canon to prove all of this. It was like a long journey to get there, a lot of steps, and I mean we learned a lot of things. The first one, like the first step in the journey was to uh, figure out Canon. Canon is by optimism, but it hasn't really been used on prod yet. And there wasn't any documentation, so we spent a few days just like learning the tools of the trade and just like understanding what's happening. Um, but once once it all clicked, uh, we like started to gain ideas on what we can do on top of it. We first started by putting like a VDF, which is a verifiable delay function, which is just a small function just for testing things if they're working. Then we had to take a Game Boy emulator, and the hard part was making it deterministic. Game Boy emulators are usually like. Um, they rely on like randomness and have like, <coughs> threads and things. We had to like iso like abstract all of that away and make it deterministic so you could prove it on chain. And then we had to um, run it in on the MIPS chain. So yeah. Uh, there's a few adjacent ideas with this, which is like you know now we have the state on chain. You can 
um, make prediction markets on chain. You can like print NFTs for which Pokemon you bought, or you can even like do things outside of like Pokemon or games like proving ML predictions or running BDFs or running other like clients. And yeah, we would like to thank um, Akatsuki, <laughs> who is the author of the Worldwide, which is a Game Boy repo, and George Hoth, who is uh, one of the authors for um, the Canon repo, and Optimism for making it all open source and supporting it. Thank you.